Good morning. It is Christmas Eve and the last day of Vlogmas. Um, I'm in Chris's car. Ooh. And I'm wearing my Vlogmas cowl. I'm wearing my Vlogmas cowl because it's dry enough. Yay! And it's cozy as hell. It's really nice. So I'm happy. Um, uh, I'm snotty as hell as well. So last night I didn't actually finish my vlog because... And I didn't tell you the story of our wedding, which I need to do today. Um, yes, uh, because my cold has gone into snot monster phase, which I knew was coming because Amelia had it last week. So I felt rotten last night, which is a really helpful thing on your wedding anniversary. I mean, never mind. So I went to bed with a cup of chamomile tea and you can hear it in my voice. Yay. <coughs> Yesterday came the news that Oxfordshire is going into tier four for on Boxing Day. I'm not going to question why they decided that Christmas is still allowed. My family have just gone in the other car to go and pick up some food. Um, but yes, we're going into tier four from Boxing Day, which means my plan to go and see my grandmother's grave and her new headstone were scuppered because obviously you can't travel out of a tier four area and Swindon or Wooden Bassett Wiltshire is going to be in tier three. So I, so they can still move, but I shouldn't go in there. Anyway, I'm not gonna question it. I think it was inevitable. It scuppered my plans. So I'm going today. Um, yeah, so I'm about to drive to Wiltshire, to Wooten Bassett, to go and see Granny. I will put a trigger warning. When I get there, I'll pop on and I'll say, guys, if you don't wanna see a graveyard, um, I'll put a timestamp on there. I'll let you know. I'll put the timestamp here as well. So you've got two opportunities to know which bit to skip to. Um, <coughs> and I'll try and put the timestamp in the description box. I don't actually know how to do that, but I will work it out. Um, so yes, I'm gonna go and see granny. I'm gonna go and pick up some flowers first for both me and my dad, because dad asked me to do that. Um, and then that'll probably mean I'm in the car for like three hours. Well, I'm gonna, it takes me an hour and a bit to get there. I'll be there for probably half an hour to put the flowers in the pot and um, generally just spend some time um, making sure she's okay. Um, she's probably got a few more neighbors since the last time I went because I didn't, I haven't been for a while. Um, and then we can get on with Christmas Eve. And I can tell you the wedding story because I'm going to tell you the wedding story. I promise <laughs> and show you lots of pretty pictures so today's is going to be a longish vlog but oh my god i am so proud of myself i've caught up everything is on youtube it's up granted yesterday's is still up only up for my patrons but once i get to wooden bassett i'm gonna put put it live because my patrons get like two or three hours ish ahead of everyone else because bless them they've been very understanding this year <laughs> I'm just uh, sorry I'm looking at the the cow and I love it it's really warm and snuggly but not too constricting and I love it anyway um something is going on with my skin today I am not going to worry about it oh and I'm wearing my D&D t-shirt <laughs> and I'll see you later right flowers hello I have just arrived oh my throat is getting worse isn't it good lord um, look at that blue sky and that sunshine. Yay, I get to see Granny at her best. So, for those of you who don't want to see this, I will put music over it. I'm going to put a timestamp here um, when um, we're away from memorials and cemeteries and stuff. Um, and uh, let's go and see Granny. hear that but there's a brass band I think on the high street playing Christmas songs and the sound is wafting over here good tick <sighs> right see you soon granny oh hello good after yeah good afternoon it's 12 20 I am back Please ignore the laundry behind me. Um, oh, I need to take my sunglasses off my head. Um, oh, 
that felt good. Um, I don't know how much we'll have picked up in, or how much I'll be putting on my video, but um, there was a brass band playing, which I, on, I think on Wooten Bassett High Street, um, all sorts of carols, and it was just, the sun was shining, and uh, yeah. <sighs> Couldn't have asked for a better opportunity and day to go and visit Granny, so I'm happy. <sighs> Even though it's not her birthday, but it's fine. And she looks so different from the other gravestones, so I'm like, yes, that was the point. <laughs> anyway, um, I am sat in the bedroom now because I am going to go and, or go and, I am going to try and get all the rest of the presents wrapped before the small person realises where I am. I've got to hide this one we've decided is going to be her Father Christmas present. It's a marble run. We, um, the kind of ethos in this house about Father Christmas present is it's not a big one. It's a special one, but it's not a, it's not the most expensive and it's not, she only gets one from Father Christmas and her stocking um, because we never want her to be one of those kids that goes into school in January and says that Father Christmas bought her an iPad and made, makes another pupil, another friend, feel bad about what they got for, from Father Christmas. Um, because we know that not everyone can afford a lot of presents, not everyone can afford Father Christmas to bring the big thing and and actually I don't think he should get all the glory. Mummy and Daddy work hard <laughs> throughout the year. We should get some of the glory. That's kind of how we deal with it with, with, with Father Christmas in this household. Um I still owe you the wedding story. I will after I've wrapped presents. Hello. <clears throat> so, oh, <laughs> I've just run down the stairs. Um, so I'm going to start my Christmas Eve cast on in a bit, but I got a Christmas Eve box from the lovely Gemma, who is the Midnight Diary. Now, this is going to go out on Christmas Day, so hopefully I'm not spoiling it for anyone, but if anyone... Excuse me! <laughs> if anyone has got the Christmas Eve box from the Midnight Diary... Oh, Mimi doesn't get to open it then, if you're going to not misbehave. Sorry. Anyway, if anyone's got them at the box, look away now, because the small person's going to open it. So, it came in a box that was left on my doorstep, so the box was very wet, so I did open it, but I haven't actually opened the skein. So, it's gone in one of my Christmas bags from... Oh, who's this one from? Um, oh, Bertie and Poppet. My hot chocolate bag. Mimi, leave them in there. Hello. Right, what's in here? Um, so, let's have a look. Oh... What's in this? Are we going to open the, the little parcel or the bag first? Um, the bag. The bag. So there's a little bag. What's in the bag? Can you tell me? <laughs> what? Can you show the camera? The chocolate. The chocolatey bear. Okay. What else? You can share that with mummy. Look. Oh, show it to the camera. It's mm. peppermint. Pepper. American Pepper. peppermint. Interesting. And. Oh. Oh, what's in there? I don't know. I don't know. Do you want some help? No, don't don't rip it. Sorry. 
finger in there and pull it out. There we go. What's in there? Mommy's arm is hurting. Oh, they're humbugs. They're minty sweets. How many are there? One. How many? How them, Mummy? Okay. Two. Okay. My fingers are sticky. Why are my fingers sticky? Three. Any more? <gasps> How many have I got in my hand? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six humbugs. Wow, should we put them back in the box? Oh, except one's just gone on the floor. Let's put... Oh, okay. We'll put them in the bag. Is there anything else in the bag? Um, you get the... What else is in the bag? The coffee. Is it coffee or is it tea? Tea. Tea. Peppermint and licorice tea from Pucker. Mummy. Nice. We did No, we're not going to open that bag. Right, is there anything else in here? Oh, there's some paper. Oh, there's a card. There's a card. I'm okay. going to open it. You can open the card for me if you want. Oh, it's a card on the sticker. What does it say on the sticker? It says thank you on the sticker. Right. Good job, Mummy. Well done. What does it say? It says thank you on the card too. Ooh. <laughs> and there's a there's a thing as well. Uh, where's the mint is going? Oh, mint humbug. Hello, that Hi. was just a neighbour. Um, <sighs> who we don't really know, but everyone kind of sends Christmas cards in the in the road, and uh, he popped in to go. Hi, thank you so much for the Christmas card. Just to let you know that my wife died last year. I'm like. Oh crap! Oh my god! And obviously, you say the pleasantries and set and ask how they're doing, and da, da 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 da. But also, like literally, oh my god! I feel so awful. And why the hell did the resident gossip not tell me? Damn. Damn. Oh, that poor man. And he's on his own for Christmas as well. There's a couple of men on our own, on their own for Christmas this year, which is sad. Um, yeah, the lovely Gordon, who's been on his own for a while. He's in his, God, I think he's 90 now. He's gonna be on his own, but I think his daughters are gonna like pop their heads on the, like through, like in the door. <laughs> so, right, okay. I'm gonna carry on opening this. Um, so the the recipe that goes in the Christmas Eve box for Gemma's um, Christmas Eve box is uh, mint humbug cupcakes, uh, which is very cool. Um, and then uh, I've just seen um, her stories on Instagram um, that says she's gonna send through. So we get um, two patterns as part of our Christmas Eve box. One from Anna Nikopirovich, who is a crochet designer. Well, she's knitting and crochet, but she's doing the crochet design. And then Anna Freiberg. Who is Yarnesty? Yeah, Anna Freiberg, who's, who is goes under the name Yarnesty on. Um, now I've got patterns from both of those designers in my library, so I, it's going to be hard to decide which one. Um, and then uh, um, Gemma is going to run a an along um, from January first for one or both one of those patterns, both of those patterns. Right, I'm going to open this, and I'll come back to you. That is so lovely. It's such a nice colour. And it's been dyed for months because Julia, who is Sparkle Julia on um, on Instagram, who's basically Gemma's, one of Gemma's closest mates, um, has commented that she'd, been see she'd seen this drying in Gemma's bathroom <laughs> months ago. So, it smells woolly, always good. So yes, that is gonna go back in the hot chocolate bag along with the humbug and the peppermint essence and the card because the card has a discount code on it for next year's box or free postage for next year's box. Um, and I'm casting that on on the 1st of January. Right, Christmas Eve cast on. I've got my Vicky Brown advent down here. I've got my bag ready with my needles. It involves a crochet uh, provisional cast on so that's what I'm gonna do now to get ready and I might just start the actual hat because it's Christmas Eve so why are you focusing on the octopus and not on me rude
Rude, camera. Rude. <laughs> right. Casting on. Isn't that weird that that's not flickering? Maybe it was the ring light. The ring light has stopped working, so I'm now in shadow. But it's fine. Okay. First slice of Christmas cake. It's good. Thank you, Abby. And I have tea, which is the night before Christmas tea from Bird and Blend, which I got in my December subscription box. It smells foul. <laughs> it's rooibos, peppermint, sencha tea, some sort of other black tea. It's supposed to be like the night of Christmas around, like the smells of Christmas around a roaring fire. It smells very smoky. Yeah, I think I might be giving that away. Or chucking it. <laughs> yeah, if anyone likes smoky tea, let me know and uh, I'll send it on. I do not like that. It's Christmas Eve, and Daddy has made you. What's Daddy made you? Hot chocolate and marshmallows and biscuit. Oh, it's a chocolate cookie, isn't it? Yummy, yummy. Before we go upstairs for bath time, marshmallow, don't put it on the lens, please. <coughs> Mummy's got one. And there's two cookies there, for one, one each for Mummy and Daddy. And Daddy's got one. Made with full fat milk and double cream. Nice. <laughs> I'm sitting in bad light just before we go downstairs and do our evening Christmas routine to tell you the story of me and Chris. <laughs> and I'm going to put some pictures. I'm talking to my camera, darling. Um, I'm going to put some pictures as I talk. So Chris and I met at uni in first year. Um, we met through the ski and board club. We actually met on a coach down to Teen, which is a resort in France um, for the first year, well our first year, um, ski and board tour. It was a very messy week, as most university trips are, um, and all bar I think two of us got food poisoning that week. Um, and Chris and I happened to be ill at the same, on the same day. Um, so we kept each other company while not being very well, I'll spare you the details. Um, and we were both in relationships at that point. So we came home. And then a couple of weeks later, we were no longer in relationships and we got together. Um, we, so we got together. And then two-ish weeks later, he proposed. <laughs> um, it was quite drunken. It was quite late at night. I still said yes. And then we had to get through uni. So we were in first year. It meant that the rest of our university experience was pretty abnormal. Um, and uh, we moved in together in third year. We lived in a lovely flat. And during that time, I was also planning a wedding. We were planning a wedding. Um, while trying to finish our final year of uni, both of us came out with two ones. Hello. Oh, look at your pajamas. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, so we got married the December, hello. We got married the December after we graduated. So we finished in the June and then I think Chris finished in the May actually. Chris graduated over the summer. I didn't actually graduate until the January after. Just That's just the way that our university works. Hello, can I tell this story please? You're not being very kind, me, the Yeah, okay. You can come and sit with me and be nice, but please, there we go, okay. So we got married um, when we were planning our, our wedding while trying to also finish university with decent grades. Um, 
we were frantically trying to find a venue that fitted what we both wanted. Now, both of us wanted kind of basically the Bell, the Beauty and the Beast ballroom, pretty much what we wanted. We wanted high ceilings, lots of room. We had 120 guests. Um, or we hoped for 120 <laughs> guests. And we looked around the whole of Kent, which is where I'm from. Hi. Trying to find a venue. We knew where we were going to get married because that was my parish church in the village that I grew up in and my brother still lives in. Hello. We're going to open our presents. We are going to go and open our presents. I'm just going to tell this story very quickly, okay? I'm going to go to here. You stay with daddy for a bit. Um, so we were, uh, the, 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 where the ceremony was going to take place was non-negotiable. That was my church in my village with a gorgeous blue door that I was always wanted to have photos taken on. I will show you a picture of said blue door. Um, uh, so we kind of were hoping to find a venue relatively close to that. What we found in the end was a hotel 45 minutes drive away um, in Tunbridge Wells, which is on the kind of, it's nearer the London Kent border, basically. Um, Tunbridge Wells is a lovely, lovely town town yes it's a spa town um and we found a beautiful venue lovely hotel with a fabulous ballroom um really lovely food um the events manager was fab <sighs> however when you find a venue like that and you want to get married in december what we didn't think was that we would be competing against corporate christmas dues and companies that have that many staff to accommodate for in a 150 seater ballroom tend to book it up for consecutive years. So even though we booked two years in advance, we were looking two years in advance of our wedding date, um, the kind of t time that we wanted to book, which was like m early to mid December so that we could then go and have our honeymoon in Canada skiing and boarding for Chris's, because um, Chris is a boarder, I'm a skier. Um, they were all booked up um, with corporate Christmas dues, uh, which is not something you think about when you're trying to book a wedding. Um, but the events manager, as I said, was amazing and came back to us after some kind of toing and froing and went, I've got the 23rd of December. Is that too late? So we went to our church and our vicar um denied and said, well, actually, the 23rd is normally the day where we're getting the church ready for Christmas, understandably. And I'm not really sure the flower ladies, because anyone who's part of a Church of England church will know that the ladies who do the admin and the flowers and the all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes are a formidable force to be reckoned with. Um, I don't know if they'll, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Um, so again, toing and froing with our vicar, who was awesome. He had a bit of a reputation um, for being quite stern with his couples um, who were going to be married. Like the church that I was part of is Church of England, but relatively high Church of England. So quite strict rules. And he had made headlines, headlines in the local rag um, in the year before where some he'd he had insisted or he insists that um People who are getting married have their well literally anyone who enters his church for a ceremony type thing covers their shoulders which the catholics ask us to do it if you're going to the vatican you must cover your shoulders i didn't think it was that big a deal but apparently it was a big deal um so it was winter i was going to wear a jacket so there was never going to be a problem with me anyway he was quite strict old john um and uh and we eventually came to an understanding that basically the flower ladies would go in about an, hour, about an hour earlier than they normally would. We would pay for the decoration of the church and we just get married an hour or so later than what we'd originally envisioned, which our photographer wasn't very happy about because obviously December, you don't have a lot of light and the later you get married, the less time you have with natural light, but she coped. Um, and actually in the end, the day was dry, cold, not massively cold though, um, and actually quite good light. It was slightly overcast, but it wasn't like gloomy. It was a really nice, nice day. Um, not sunny though. That would have been that would have been perfect. Um, not windy. It was it was a lovely day. Um, and that's it really. We had uh, it was a lovely day. We had a, a, we had a fabulous photographer. The venues were amazing. Um, people didn't complain about having to drive forty five minutes between the church and the hotel. Um, 
and we had a lot of lovely people around us. There's quite a few people now, having been married 14 years, that we're no longer in touch with, but I think that's the same for a lot of people, particularly when you get married at 22. Um, but that was it. It was a it was a lovely, lovely day. It, we were one of the first of our kind of big group to get married. Um, I then spent the next eight years deflecting questions of, are you pregnant yet? You gotta have kids. Oh, are you, no, it, no. Guys, never ask a woman about her fertility journey. Whether it's, whether the answer is as simple as, no, we're not ready yet, or something actually that's a lot more heartbreaking, don't ask, just don't. Like, if someone wants to have kids, they're gonna have kids. If they wanna have more than one kid, they're gonna have more than one kid. If they're not having kids, there might be a reason behind that. Don't poke the bear. Anyway, but other than that, that was our journey. And we are now gonna go and do Night Before Christmas and open one present. Hi Vlogmas. So, it is 20 past 11 on Christmas Eve and I am signing off. Thank you so much for uh, those of you who have watched from beginning to end this year. Thank you so much for those who've commented and uh, generally like talked to me about, about the vlogs. Um, I've really enjoyed doing it this year. There's been some hard bits like there always are in general daily life. You can't go through a month without having some sort of real life. Um, and uh, there's been some really nice bits. And I mostly do these vlogs as kind of uh, documenting snapshots of my life. And particularly as Amelia is growing up, it's really nice um, to kind of document that that time. And it's, and it's lovely to take you guys with me while I'm doing that. Um, it's, it's just fun, isn't it? <laughs> so for now, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for following me around for the last 24 days. Um, and for the most part, Amelia, and a little bit more Chris than you've been, you've seen in recent years and recent months as well, which has been really nice. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas if you are celebrating, a wonderful festive period, a wonderful break um, if you are able to. Uh, it's a funny old world right now and I know for me watching these vlogs um, from other people has been a real um, safe place I suppose, um, just watching how other, other people are dealing with. Um, the world that we're living in right now and how actually life is carrying on as normal for the most part um and that's kind of a comfort in itself so for my fellow vloggers who watch the, these thank you um it's been i'm not going to list off the people that i've been watching because i'll leave someone out sharon it, you're very correct that there's always someone you miss isn't there um so i won't list them but i for those who have been watching, who have been doing Vlogmas and who, and who, and, um, who I've been watching, thank you. It's been really nice um, to see what everyone's up to as well. Um, and uh, we're all struggling through it at the moment, uh, some better than others. Um, but we're all getting through it and there is light at the end of the tunnel. So, so we'll be back to regularly scheduled planning and podcasting in early January, hopefully. Um, and we'll be carrying on the Tunisian crochet along. So um, I look forward to seeing you then. Happy Christmas, guys.